I wanted to go over light filters in Arnold Lights just for a little bit today. There's some nice features within them that can help control your lighting. So I've got a very standard scene here. I basically have a sphere and two planes. And if you zoom out, you can see it's just, you know, they're perpendicular to each other. And what I've got set up is the Arnold render view, which will be real time pretty much. So, and I've also keyframed the perspective camera to stick back to this image. And you can see here I have a standard surface shader. I tweaked it a little bit so it's a little less reflective. And I've got some lights already pre-set up in the scene, but they're, they're pretty normal. You can see right in here or in here for Arnold lights. Area light, sky dome light, mesh light, photometric, light portal, physical sky. I am just going to go over a few things that pertain specific to light filters. So I just have the sky dome light to kind of give a nice ambient light. Um, and I'll probably be turning it off. Or what we can do is I have an intensity of 1 and the resolution of 1. You could always just lessen its impact in the scene. So right now it's a point 0.1. And if I turn on this spotlight, you can see there's my spotlight affecting the scene right now so that's how intense that it is and I just have it kind of hitting at an oblique side like a three-quarter you see the shadow terminator right here and a nice soft cast shadow and I've already done some uh, noodling on this light so we'll go over doing uh, the spotlight in a second so let me just hide that back again and let's go in here. So we have two area lights. Um, what I can do is show you those two before we get into it. So this light is basically mimicking the same as the spotlight, but the spotlight has a more uh, spotlight effect where the, everything else is vignetted on the edges. But the highlight and the shadow area are roughly the same using an area light. And there's things that we can do under light filters under the Arnold lights to mimic the spotlight uh, light blocker and light decay which we'll get into and then this area light I'll turn off this one if we just move out from our scene Let's see, I had made a gobo before, so I got these little lines, but I made it where it was blurrier because I felt it was too sharp before. So let's see this. So what you're seeing is a repeat because the, the cube is affecting everywhere. So what you could do is basically just transform this cube and really scale it up. And then now you can see that it's basically the one image going over it. So you can use this in different degrees to get a look that you want. And see here I'm rotating it in 3D space. So there could be some really cool looks achieved through this in the shader uh, that are quite nice. So that is basically using a light blocker aspect. Now the nice thing with these, they're very easy. You can just click disconnect. The light blocker is gone. You still have the transform, so you could always rehook it up. But right now I'm going to just delete it for simplicity's sake. And then now let's go back to the same area light. And we're going to add a light decay. Now you can do both of these. See, you have both actually in here. So there's a lot of good that you can do with these if you know how to use them judiciously. So right now I'm going to delete the blocker and right now we have the light decay. So you can see the light decay popped up over here. So you have use near attenuation and use far attenuation. 
um, and it basically is doing exactly what it says. So if we do use near, what we're going to see is that this light is going to be affected by the near roll off. Now, sometimes it's hard to see. Let me turn that one off and do the far. Turn off our sky dome so that we just have this. And I'm going to delete this again. Go back in here. So sometimes it's easier to see. Let me use this. This other light is why I set up and close this. There we go. So this area light has the same light decay. Let me turn it off. And let me make this brighter. So let's go 30. There we go. So the light is pointing down. You can see that here, right? The light's pointing straight down onto this sphere. And again, I have the light decay used near. And when you turn it on, see I quickly went to 24 and it disappeared. But if I do one, what it's going to do is you're going to stop the light from the near, how close to the actual light. So the more that you lower this, you're buffering how far that near attenuation is. See right now that we lost like the, the actual hot spot of the light. And then the near end is where you can basically feather it. So the more we drag it out, it's going to become dark. But if I add it like maybe two, you know, it's starting to feather how that light is affecting the seam. And you can always animate these, which are kind of nice, so that you can have a, a light ramp on and ramp off nicely. Now, if you want, you can see it better if you wanted to turn on fog. So let's go to atmosphere and then add atmosphere volume. And then I'm just going to, there we go. I put it at a point 0.2 so you can see that atmosphere in the scene right now. Let me just close that and go back to our area light. And then now let's first just try lowering the light. And you can see we've lost the hot spot, but there's still light affecting the scene. And now if I do like a 15, you can see how it's feathering out that light source. Now you can do, you now let's see there's the hot spot of the light, the actual square is seen. You know, these are the edges of the hot zone. You could do it on the far attenuation as well. And right now we're at zero, but the far end is at 12. So let me go back to zero. So now you can't see anything. So you want to spread it out. And you can see what happens. See, it's how far out that light is actually going to go. So you could have it at a 48. And then just like what we did with the other, you're going to eat in to how much that it is uh, going outward. So if we go less, more, let's go two. So see, it's very tight to the light source now. Hmm. Should be able to, there we go. Interesting. You should be able to ramp this the same way. But you can kind of see what I'm talking about, where it's going to basically eat all the way in. There we go. And you could do some really nice atmospheric effects with the light in this area. So that's those. Let me hide this light. Now, you can also use the standard lights in Maya, ambient light, directional point, spotlight, in Arnold. So I have this spotlight that I've set up. And let's go back to the camera that I have. And you can see it here. So this spotlight is shining here. And we have a cone. 
And what I've done is I basically have an intensity of 20, no decay rate, and the cone angle has been increased. So you can see here the cone angle is how wide the light is actually going to shine in this scene. I still have our atmospherics on, so let's go back in here, and that's easy to turn off for right now. So you right-click over atmosphere, break connection, and now there's no you know no fog in the scene so go back to our spotlight cone angle now penumbra is basically how sharp you want that edge of the light see right here the cone of light right now it's a very hard line which feels very unnatural so as we increase or decrease it it's so tack sharp so the minute you go negative see right there you're starting to get that softening of that shadow and you can really let it fade out now the other thing you notice is the shadow of this sphere you have a nice bounce light the shadow terminator right here and the cast shadow the cast shadow is really nice and soft but under the arnold tab under this light because remember this is not an arnold light we have options in here and you want to make sure that exposure is on when you create this light so control H let me just make a new light spotlight so the spotlight is in the scene let me make the intensity 40 and you can see we have a little bit going here and if we increase the exposure now we've gotten brighter let me look through this, look through selected. So right now our light is on the bottom of our scene. So we want to, there we go, uh, mimic, there we go, mimic what we have. So now I can go back into the perspective and we're back at our view. So to see the light right here, now what you're noticing is this is a new light so I want to the penumbra angle so I want to soften that light and you can see the cone is softened of the light but the cast shadow is still sharp the only way to change that is down under the Arnold tab under radius and you want to increase that to a number and you can make it more or less so that basically this is softening and softening and it's really softening the edge. The contact shadow is still sharp, but everything is falling off rather nicely. So let me turn this one off for right now, and let me go back to my original spot. And you can see um, what we've got here. So we go back down under that Arnold tab, right? This is all under the Arnold tab, because Arnold is a node behavior. If I open this, we have visibility and we have light filters again. Now if we do add, you can see that we actually get a few more options, which is great. You basically have a gobo and a barn door added. So the gobo is great. Basically add it and there's the gobo and you can see it up there as well. And basically you have nothing in the scene yet. A gobo is basically like a stencil that you're gonna project through the light and right now we want to add that gobo and we're going to add that same gobo that we saw earlier so it should be this and now this gobo is passing through this light and you can see how it's different than when we saw it as a light blocker because the gobo here is actually shining through the light and what's happening is the black in your drawing of your gobo is basically gonna cut light and the white is gonna allow the light to go through it so effectively this is casting a shadow of like a grate over everything in the scene and it's a very cheap way to get some really cool effects whether it be like this like window panes or grates or you could project an image of a tree that's casting without actually having a, a, a 3D physical tree and it can really be used selectively to do some really cool effects. 
Um, and then while you're in this light under the gobo, you do have density, so you could increase or decrease it for the, the map itself. And, you know, there's some scaling that you can do in here, but I typically try to do it within the gobo, like change the size of it and everything. Okay, so that is the gobo. So let's go back in. I'm going to disconnect that. So see, it's gone. Let's go back to add, and we'll do the barn door. See the barn door there. And the barn door is basically... If you know how real lights are worked, if you've ever used them, uh, theater lighting and lighting on set, they'll have a mechanism that are barn doors that are basically doors that can open and close to change how far a light is going to hit a certain area. So we have top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, top left, top. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do this but you can see right here top left I'm closing the barn door on the top left and now I'm doing the top right so let me lessen that and you can see right here it's coming from the right so we're closing that down and then the edge you can feather it by doing that top edge so there's a way to get a little bit more stylization with how these are working And you can see right here, see we're coming across, bottom left, and now if we just do the edge, it's getting softer. So it could be really cool to create these really subtle effects by using all or, or none of these together uh, to add to your lighting setups. Without having to overly complicate a scene, you can achieve some really nice looks. So I hope this was useful. Again, these are light filters using Arnold within Maya.